Good Friday afternoon to you and welcome to our Chef Show Place. My name is Pam Smith. It's my delight to welcome you. Wish you a happy Friday. It's Friday fun day, you know. And a fun day we do have indeed, not just ahead of us, but we're kicking it off with two very fun people. In just a moment, you're going to have a chance to meet Brian and Shanna O'Hay. You may have seen them um, many times, actually, because Shanna's quite the fierce competitor from seeing her on Chop to seeing her um, try to beat Bobby Flay and when rewrapped, we see not only her, but we see the works of their effort and their magic appearing in O, Oprah's Magazine, Gail King's My Favorite Things. Their lobster pot pie is pretty much legendary. And we'll talk about that. And we're going to talk about some of their other legendary things like the lobster lo mein that they had last year at our party for the census. This year, they're switching it up and kind of swooshing us down to the Caribbean. We're doing a little bit of a jerk um, scallop together with coconut polenta, a banana guacamole in the way only Brian and Shanna can do. Um, they are the owners of the Kinney Buckport Inn in, yes, Maine. Um, they have an incredible restaurant that just receives wide acclaim, and we're just always so excited when they're here with us. We're going to be able to walk through the recipe that they have provided. You'll have that in front of you to follow along as we put it all together. But best of all, you'll get a chance to taste this dish. And in about 15 or 20 minutes, you'll find that dish coming out to you when it gets to you. Dive right in, get it while it's hot, and try to save a sip of your festival Chardonnay that is being delivered to you now, a sip that you can have, hopefully, to pair with that dish. We'll talk more about it with Brian and Shanna, but we think that it's going to be quite a nice pairing. It's our festival Chardonnay last year for our 20th year celebration for the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, we decided to come out with a commemorative Chardonnay and a commemorative Cabernet Sauvignon. This year, because of the wide um, excitement from last year, decided to do so for our 21st year of the festival, um, but sourced the, the grapes from some different areas. Last year, the Chardonnay was primarily coming from the Carneros area of Napa Valley, but this year, it's from five different Appalachians throughout California, from Santa Barbara all the way up to um, the Sonoma Coast, Russian River Valley. But a lot of the grapes in this bottle are from Central Coast, the Monterey area. And so with that, almost as you get the nose of it, you'll pick up just a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of mango, some tropical fruit that we think will be really delicious with the scallop, with banana chips and coconut polenta. So we'll determine that as it comes, get a little bit of that nose, a sip, but again, hopefully can save a sip as well. Um, sit back, enjoy, and how about a huge food and wine welcome for Shanna and Brian O'Hay. Woohoo! <laughs> and here they are. <laughs> So good to see you. I know, always. Oh, Love oh. you. So, so <laughs> good. Nice to see you. I know. Of course, Lewis always um, squirms a bit when I give you that big hug because of that microphone. But <laughs> it's all right. You're in good places. So it's all good. And we have wine. Oh, fabulous. Um, again, we think that it'll be quite a delicious one. So um, we're going to do a little cho toast. And as you get your wine, you might do the same thing with the table you're sitting with because they're destined to become your new best friends. So <laughs> cheers, cheers to a wonderful, fun Friday. Nice. Indeed. Yes. Cheers. Mm. Nice, right? Very nice. That tropical oh, fruit yeah. really does really come nice. through, but not so heavily oaked. Yeah. It's got a nice buttery finish. Yeah, yeah, which will be very nice, too, to kind of cut through, you know, yeah. some of, of what's there, but yet yeah, be a compliment, be a too. So Gorgeous pairing. Yes. So you all have been very busy. Here, I'll oh, give you oh, a thank little you. spot. Yes. Don't take it too far. Don't take it too far. That's a deal. That's a deal. I was about to say, you're, you're I know, the one person get... that's been able to do that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's never happened before. But you all have been very busy, including a very busy season at the end. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Kenny Bunk was quite busy this year. Uh, we had beautiful temperatures throughout the summer and fall, so it's been uh, quite busy, but we're, we're quite happy to be able to sneak away and this is our sixth time at the, the festival. Is so. it six yeah. years? I was trying to think. I know, yeah. that's fabulous, isn't it? 
It is um, great. 26 room in, correct? Yes. Um, again, restaurant right there at the inn, and you all somehow find time to do it all. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Quite amazing. <laughs> Juggle a lot, but yeah, it's a, a historic property. It's been there. It's been a running restaurant and inn since the early 1900s. So it's pretty neat to you know continue that tradition and and we try to uh, you know represent the old and the new. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, yeah, just it, it always keeps it interesting for yes. sure. Yes. Well, it's actually exactly what I see in this dish that you're doing today because it keeps your celebration, which is always seafood, but totally. puts it into kind of an interesting little twist, which I really love. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so good. No, so I think we should... You think we should get, kick get it off? Yeah, Let's absolutely. get cooking. Okay. So it's on. There you go. And It'll come up and then we'll get the... There you go. Brian, you're going to start with the polenta? Uh, yes, we're going to do a, um, a coconut polenta. So again, polenta is, you know, can... Again, be like um, like grits, so it does mm -hmm. take a little uh, longer to take. Uh, some people do plenty with cream, some people do with uh, with water or, or stock. Uh, today we're going to switch it up a little bit, and we're actually going to be using a little bit of both. We're going to use coconut water, uh, which you can obviously mm -hmm. get at your store just uh, as is. The great thing about coconut water it has a lot of health benefits. So yeah, again, loaded with have, electrolytes, right? If you have too much of the wine, uh, this this dish will certainly help balance that out the next day. <laughs> nice little chaser. I like yeah. it. I like so it. So we're going to put a little. Coconut water in there. Nice. Uh, we're going to use a little bit of coconut's milk. Beautiful. You want that to come up to a yeah. boil? And then um, to really kind of bring out the coconut flavor, uh, we're going to use um, like Coco Lopez, mm -hmm. which is an ingredient that a lot of times you put into like pina coladas. Mm. Um, so again, lots of just coconut flavor. It also has a little bit of a sweetness. Right. Uh, so it's just going to kind of... Uh, what we want to do with this dish is kind of balance our flavor, so we're constantly adding heat and sweet kind of throughout the dish, so it'll be a nice balance. Yeah, and really enhance that coconut flavor with that touch of sweetness. Exactly. I like it. Then I we're like it. Take a little uh, red pepper flakes, spice it up a little oh, bit. Oh, there's your heat coming into the sweet. I like it too. And a little white pepper. Just add a little more. Do we have to be concerned, Brian, about the coconut milk scorching? Is it like well, cooking with milk? That's one of the reasons why I like to add the coconut water, uh -huh. because it kind of thins it out. I mean, if you walk away from it, uh, it, it certainly will, but this will kind of give you the advantage of not having to kind of hover over the stove because the coconut water kind of dilutes that. Okay. And you want to be careful. Coconut milk, too, can come sweetened and unsweetened. Mm -hmm. So because we're adding that Coco Lopez, you definitely would want to do the unsweetened. Mm -hmm. Or, again, you could... You could do the sweetened as well and then just eliminate the Coco Lopez, but then you probably would want to add more coconut water. Yeah. So those can be things that can be a little tricky when you're shopping. No, I, I love, a, and you're not using much, just that little two ounces of the Coco Lopez immediately right. makes you feel like you've gone away on a tropical dream, right? Yeah, yeah we kind of think that's like it's like a hidden star ingredient that uh -huh. just pulls the flavors. All of a sudden when we were um, making this and testing it, we're like, oh my gosh, that really got us that punch of coconut mm -hmm. that we were looking for. Yeah, love that. A little Love pinch that. of salt, and we're just going to kind of let this come up to heat. And again, polentas are different too. You can have a, like a whole grain polenta, you could have a white grain polenta. Today we're using a, a yellow polenta, mm -hmm. which again has a nice buttery kind of a, a yeah. finish. Right. I want that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Well, and we'll give such a nice color balance to the plate as well. Exactly, because again, we're, we're dealing with a lot of the same tones and colors today, mm -hmm. but. <laughs> Uh, the, the flavors will be there. Shades of. Exactly. Yes. Well, it's all in honor of Yellowween, right? So this is true. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Any of you coming to the Party for the Senses tonight? Okay, a few of nice. you are. Um, Party for the Senses is quite a celebrative thing, usually on Saturday nights during the Food and Wine Festival. But this weekend, we're doing a double hitter. We're doing a Party for the Senses tonight, and you all are going to be cooking there, which is quite a wonder that you're here right now because <laughs> they're going to be cooking cooking for 1,200 of their closest friends. <laughs> um, and um, the theme is Yellowween. So, yes. again, right in theme. I like it. We're lucky. They, they provide great help in the kitchen. Uh, you know, the, the people who are on the pr Disney program here and then uh, getting volunteers from other culinary schools. So mm -hmm. they always put us in, with, with, in very good hands. Well, and one of those good hands, or two of those good hands, <laughs> is right here. <laughs> and that's Chef Richard, who um, helps us to create magic here at the culinary demo. So it's always a pleasure, Richard.
Okay, so, so we're just going to move this up because that's going to take about twenty to twenty-five minutes, okay. and we'll constantly kind of stir that throughout. But uh, not not as much as like stirring a risotto constantly. You no, just because you're, you're not back. really um, releasing the starch. Basically, mm -hmm. here you just want to make sure you're incorporating, folding in the the liquid, and making sure it's not going to now that there's a, a solid in the pan that it's mm -hmm. not going to scorch on the bottom. Okay, good. Great. So I'm going to uh, work on our uh, banana chip, uh, which is, again, we always are thinking, chefs are thinking about texture. So we're going to have that nice soft polenta. Uh, we're going to have, you know, a good texture with the scallop. And then we want a little bit of crunch, which is where the banana chip comes in. These are just, you know, get these in your... Uh, the, the dried section of a grocery store. I love these. They're a great mm -hmm. snack. Uh, and again, when thinking about sometimes doing stuff in Florida, I want to make sure that we're not going to not going to go um, stale with the humidity. I always get concerned yes. about stuff like that. I made the mistake of doing a caramel chip in high humidity con conditions, and it was a really bad choice. So it's good to, to, you know, again, think about where you are when you're menu planning and presenting. Right. Uh, so I've just got some butter um, here melted in a pan. And I actually mm -hmm. don't need all this, so we'll scoop that out. I must say, I've never seen a chef take butter out, out. of a pan. I'm very <laughs> impressed with that. Yes. <laughs> You're right. We always, that is flavor. So we always like to add more I of know. it. <laughs> and so we've got, we're, we've been kind of obsessed lately with these, these powders. It's been a new thing uh, on um, that they're dehydrating powers and they've got, again, tons of flavor. Uh, so we've got what's a tamarind powder. Tamarind is a very um, like high lime uh, flavor in that. Uh, so that's going to bring out a lot of brightness. Again, when we're talking about how you add um, flavors to things, it's acidity. Acidity, fat, salt, those are mm -hmm. all ways to pull things forward. So this is going to help, again, elevate that taste level. Now, as far as these powders are concerned, I don't think you'd be able to just find them in like a regular store, but certainly online. Mm -hmm. They have tons of these uh, available. Right. And then this is a coconut powder. Almost like you could take a granulated coconut and just puree that up in a spice grinder and you'd get the same effect. This is a chili lime, so that's going to give us a little bit of heat. This particular one has a little bit of salt in it, so we're going to have a finishing salt, but I'll hold back a little bit on that because of that, um, that variety. And again, when you're doing, looking at any of these powders or things in recipes, always read the ingredients because sometimes you know what we work with isn't always what you're able to get everywhere else. Right. And you want to go with a product that's just what it says, tamarind exactly. powder, exactly. not a tamarind-flavored powder. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yes. I'm sure Amazon Prime could have it delivered to the main gate in an hour. So. Seriously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. That is amazing. That's changed lives, really. Yes, I know it. <laughs> and so then um, we're just going to add the chips in here, and we're just going to basically coat them. We don't even really need to cook the chips because they're already um, browned here, and mm -hmm. they've already toasted. So we're really just looking to, for it to coat it. And because it's r the butter, um, we're going to be able to stick this in the fridge, and it'll kind of just like harden on there and get a nice glaze. Oh, beautiful. Um, versus if we used oil, then it would just, you know, it wouldn't um, sort of solidify. Right. It would stay separated. Exactly. Too. So that's really all we we're doing. And then we did make this um, finishing salt, which I'm actually going to end up using, which I don't think it's in your recipe, but... Mm -hmm. um, we're going to end up doing that in the banana guacamole where we took some orange zest, and, and Brian will talk more about zest because it's sort of his obsession. Mm -hmm. uh, but we basically took it off, let it, you could either put it in your oven without the pilot light on, let it sit overnight and it'll dry out. Uh, or we had these great, all this great equipment in Disney, uh, we were able to do it within like three hours yes. on their low ovens. Uh, but, and we add it to salt. So then it's just going to give you that orange salt again, mm -hmm. building, layering flavors. Keep, keep doing this. Um, and so, like I said, there's a little salt in that, so I'm just going to add just a touch of that. And that's it just going to... It just gives that brightness. Right. Yeah, nice. And you, we do have it in the recipe. It's, um, and you use the pink um, sea salt? Sea salt, yes. 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 So you can use the pink sea salt. Again, there's so many different salts mm -hmm. out there. Uh, I actually did a little mix of the pink sea salt and kosher salt on this mm -hmm. one uh, just to extend it a bit further. Uh, again, we, we prefer um, bigger grains of salt. Kosher salt, again, is that bigger grain versus the very fine grain. The fine, that's when you can tend to maybe oversalt things or you're, you're you know, it's just the, the bigger grain, I think, is, is an easier way to season. And it gives more bang for the buck, if totally. you will, because you get such you're a not going to put as much flavor. in. Yes, right. in so many ways. So I'll just put this on a tray, and I'm going to throw that right in the fridge. Nice. 
And that'll keep for a couple of days at this point. Oh, so again, oh, yeah. you can put a it in a Ziploc time. bag and mm-hmm. it's good to go. But do you need to keep it in the fridge once you it's don't ha- I mean, I wouldn't, I would, somewhere if it wasn't a, a hot area, right. you know, like in the 60s, you know, high 60s, I think you're fine. Mm-hmm. But otherwise. Well, that will never be in Florida. That will <laughs> right. only be in the refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Maine, we don't have a, a problem Yeah, with that. exactly. Exactly. Although you had a warm summer, right? But yeah. This was uh, one of the first times, I think. In years, they were saying Maine was actually in a drought. Oh, my um, goodness. And it was, uh, again, we're uh, in a historic inn, so the kitchen doesn't have AC, so we certainly, uh, we, oh, we certainly felt it this summer. I bet you did. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's crazy to come to Florida to cool off, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you can see the polenta there, but just, you know, sort of starting to look like porridge. Uh-huh. Oh, they had, yeah, they back, yeah, back over there. Oh, they have yeah, it. there we oh, go. Yeah. There you go. Look, look at that. <laughs> yes, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. So, you can so again, see that's going to bind up a little bit more as mm-hmm. it's cooking. The uh, the plant is going to kind of release and the starch is, is going to come through. And you through. just have that on a nice low heat? I, I started on a high heat to mm-hmm. really start to incorporate it. Mm-hmm. And then I've now just switched it down to about a medium heat. Okay. Um, and this is one of those things we'll just keep our eye on it. Uh, if we need to add a little more coconut water or a little bit more coconut milk, we can kind of just keep an eye on it as we're preparing okay. the rest of the dish. Great. So the next thing we're going to move to is scallops. Um, scallops come in a variety of sizes. Today we're using what they call a U10 scallop. So a U10 scallop means under 10 scallops per pound. So it's one of the largest scallops wow. you can get. Almost an ounce and a half each, Exactly, right? yeah. These are quite nice. We were quite, quite happy with, uh, <laughs> yes. with what we, we got. We aim to please here at yes. Disney, yes. Um, each scallop, every time when you get it, when we order it, we always order a dry U10 scallop. Basically what that is saying is that it's not p- packed in a solution. A lot of times they'll pack scallops or other um, shellfish in a solution where it's kind of salty and it kind of impairs into the flavors into the, the, to the shellfish. So we always order a dry U10. Um, the one thing with scallops, they always come with a little bit of a membrane, which can be quite chewy. So you always want to make sure you, you remove the membrane. The one thing you can do, though, is if you're dealing with a lot of scallops, you can save these membrane, membranes and put them into like a stock mm-hmm. and almost make like a uh, scallop stock yeah. if you're doing some sort of a seafood chowder or something along those lines. Because right. am I thinking right, you're making this dish tonight, you've pulled 1,200 of those puppies off? Right. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's Gives a, lot of a whole new meaning to that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it, that's the, is it called the abductor muscle? It's what holds it to the shell, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it's just that tough muscle. Exactly. So one of the things we like to do with scallops, and it, we do it for two reasons, especially with the dish we're preparing today, is we like to score the top of them, but you don't want to go too, too deep into the scallop. And we're doing this for, for two reasons. One, it kind of looks nice when you cook it. Um, so that's always kind of a bonus. Yes. But two, we want to kind of um, get that flavor marinating throughout the scallop. And we're using a lot of citrus with this dish, um, which again, in a lot of uh, Spanish tapas menus, they lose citrus. And it's basically how they cook the scallop. Because mm-hmm. um, nice. the, the acid will cook it. So this will kind of uh, begin the cooking process. So you're just doing a little cross score. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. And again, when you have 1,200 scallops across <laughs> score. <laughs> You're, plus, you're plus seeming very demo. patient. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, 1,200 plus 120. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. We had uh, Rock Harper, who won season three of Hell's mm. Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. And one of the questions, may have been by someone here actually, was why is it that Gordon Ramsay just gets so nutty about scallops? I mean, it seems like the one thing in competition that people always mess up is scallops uh, and risotto, risotto yeah. but you know, those two one. are always the things. And, and it's, it, it, there really is a technique to scallops. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you want a, a nice hot pan when you're sear, searing them. Again, you want the product to be good. Because right. again, if you have a, a product that's super wet, you're never going to get mm-hmm. that good, um, good sear on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, d- again, different chefs have different levels of where they want their seafood cooked. I'd say mm-hmm. Gordon's probably someone who wants more of a medium scallop, right. but not patrons don't always want that. Some people want them fully cooked. So we need right. to, again, listen to, you know, who your audience is and, and right. who you're serving it to. Yeah, I think that um, that Rock says Gordon has like a five-second window. Probably, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> five seconds too much, done. Five seconds too little, out. So right. really something. Perfect. So we're going to start with our marinade. Um, and again, this is kind of a loose base mm-hmm. jerk marinade. There's a little bit of Asian flavoring in it. Um, and this is something where you can kind of dial up what flavors you like, what flavors 
um, perhaps you, you don't like as much. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing we wanted to talk about is ginger. Ginger bulbs, uh, you see them in all the supermarkets. Um, a lot of times people buy dried ginger because they say they're not going to use that whole piece mm -hmm. of ginger. Uh, something that we do at the end, uh, easiest way to peel ginger is with a spoon. And you kind of just scrape it. And it becomes real easy to just clean out. So much easier than with a knife, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it usually has all those knots on it, and the spoon mm -hmm. just goes right around it. It's super easy. Yeah, so you just kind of can scrape around the, uh, the knots. And what we do at the end, again, because when we get ginger in, it's not like you're using it all at once. It freezes really, really nice. So we'll mm -hmm. individually kind of uh, wrap it in plastic wrap. And as we need it, we just pull it out. And a microplane. You mm -hmm. just kind of zest it, and when it's frozen, it doesn't really kind of right. mush up. It mm -hmm. really just kind of makes it a powder. Ah, almost yeah, zest that's, batter. That's, it, yeah, I was going to say, that's an important tip. Keep it frozen. Mm -hmm. When it starts to thaw out, it's very mushy and very liquidy, and mm -hmm. it's really then hard to work with. Then I would say use a knife to chop it, mm -hmm. but when it's frozen on the microplane, it's perfect. Brian um, did this, uh, we just added it to the menu this year. It's called a Kung Pao cauliflower, Ooh. and he does ginger, uh, scallions, um, garlic, uh, uh, spicy pepper. What else is in there? Hoisin, soy. Um, oh my gosh. But yeah, yeah when we get an order, I'll just take awesome. the um, yeah. the ginger right out of the freezer and we'll grate it to order because then you just get that fresh locked mm. flavor right then and there. Yeah. Love uh, that. But for today, we actually want a, a, like a chunkier ginger because one of the things we want to do with this uh, marinade is we're going to put it over the scallops, but we want to then take it off. And if it's powdered ginger or very small pieces, mm -hmm. uh, that just makes it's your job clean. a little bit right. more and, and difficult. And ginger, too, can be a little bit like jalapenos, can be a little bit of a skin burner. So if you have sensitivity uh, to that, I, I do. I usually wear plastic gloves because it can, it can just, because they're, I mean, ginger's got heat in it. Yes. Um, so, so that's something, too, to just be mindful of. Mm -hmm. So then we have jalapenos that and we chopped up. speaking of jalapenos, yes. yes. We actually keep the seeds in. Again, this is just a way to kind of infuse more heat. Mm -hmm. The seeds actually carry a ton of the, the oil. Oh, so, yeah. Um, again, if you don't like it as hot, you can certainly remove the seeds and, mm -hmm. and not have to deal with that. Uh, then we take roasted garlic. All we use at the end is roasted garlic. So mm -hmm. we take whole garlic cloves and we put them in olive oil and we bake them at like 375 degrees for two and a half hours. So again, wow. it just gives the garlic a little bit more of a sweeter flavor. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more, you sometimes have to use a little bit more. But we always say we want you to remember the meal, not be reminded of it. Yes. And uh, <laughs> when you roast garlic, it just kind of, it helps you out later in the day. It's always a bad thing the next day when someone says, where did you eat last night? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little bit of brown sugar. Again, that's going to um, kind of counteract that heat of the ginger and the um, jalapeno. A little bit of maple syrup. I love that that was your nod to your part of the world. Yes. yes. With that little maple exactly. syrup, which yeah. is great. Yes. A little um, Chinese five spice. Nice. Yeah, that's a fun thing to do in Maine, to come in the wintertime. They have the mm -hmm. maple festival. That's mm. really neat to see. And they do maple cotton candy and maple butter and maple. Oh, my gosh. Has anyone ever done that before? A little yeah. maple? Mm. <laughs> so fun. We have some fresh thyme. And again, I'm just going to kind of, with shears, cut it a little bit larger because we want to discard this mm -hmm. afterwards. I like your style. <laughs> and then, like Shanna said, I am obsessed with zesting. Uh, again, I think there's so much flavor in the zest and the oils of all of citrus fruit. So mm -hmm. even at the end, whenever someone is using something in the kitchen, we zest it and we'll dry it. And then we use that, the, the zest in soups and marinades. And it's just another way to kind of infuse flavors mm -hmm. uh, down the line. So I think sometimes it's some of the most uh, flavorful parts of uh, things sometimes get thrown out. And you said that when you're drying it, do you do that in the oven or do you just put it on put trays? It, yeah, you can just you, put it on a tray mm -hmm. and just let it sit if you've got a warm spot in mm -hmm. your kitchen or, you know, mm -hmm. on top put of the it, stove. Even if you fine. put it in the oven with the pilot light on, that'll mm -hmm. just kind of right. uh, help just, speed it up. Just don't forget it's in oven, there. Yeah, if your oven was on, you'd want it probably just at like 150 or something. Really, as yeah, low as it can go. Low, yes. yes. So both the orange and the lime. Lime zest, yeah. Love that. Now, we do a uh, citrus crab ravioli uh, at the inn as well, which is a very popular dish. And uh, Brian uses the, the orange and lime um, zest and lemon uh, in the pasta dough and actually uses the segments uh, as, as the liquid oh. instead of, um, yeah, purees that all up in there oh, instead of gosh, the water. Oh, what so a th pop yeah. of flavor, right? Yeah, that one people love. So what we're going to do now is just kind of peel off that, that white part of the... Um, 
the rind because that can get kind of get bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, because we're discarding this, we can kind of just do chunked up uh, segments. You don't have to kind of uh, pull out the uh, seeds or the, um, you know, do a, a, a full supreme or right. a full segment. So you can still leave those segments to right. somewhat together and just chop it. Nice. So it's really becomes a jerk marinade is what you're doing to just infuse that flavor into the scallops. Exactly. Yeah. And now we, um, we kind of left this on the scallop for about 15 hours. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the size of the scallop, you kind of want to regulate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. In about four days, Nantuc Nantucket Bay scallops mm -hmm. come into season. I don't know if you've ever had them, but oh, they're, they're the best. Incredible. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We actually looked uh, for the, but we're about five days too early until they come into season. Wow. Um, but if you were doing something like that, I would only maybe leave them in the marinade for an hour to two right, hours. Right, they're so small. Right. So I, that's interesting because I would think that even this size scallop, that all of that acidity from the, the citrus would almost cook the scallop. And in part, it's going to. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So basically what so we that's, Yeah, that, again, why we don't want to leave it on too long because it, right. because it would. I mean, okay. It does have a little of that kind of ceviche mm -hmm. thing sort of happening. Yes, I would it. think. Sounds so now delicious. we're just going to kind of leave that on. And that marinade you can make up to like two days in advance. Mm -hmm. And actually, the earlier you make it, it's kind of better because those orange and uh, lime, it's going to kind of leach out and it's mm -hmm. going to become more of a, a juice than a kind of a, a thicker. It's almost a salsa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At this so, point. right. Um, so then, uh, yeah, I would make that maybe like a day ahead mm -hmm. of time and you can kind of let that sit. And then mm -hmm. when you're, you're preparing your scallops, you can just pour it over. Okay. Right. Yeah, nice. that's yeah, exactly what we did here for prep. We made the marinade the day before mm -hmm. and then um, put it in just to help you with time. Okay. So good. We'll go over to the banana guacamole. And your dish is coming out. And as discussed, go ahead and dive right in. It looks yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. So I loved reading this recipe and seeing the banana guacamole because, again, it just sounds so unique and, and right. just a wow factor and a great thing to do with bananas. Absolutely, yeah. No, we, we do a banana salsa. On, uh, we've done that on scallops. Uh, and this is just, we're just making a little bit creamier. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, just it's, again, these tropical flavors, I think they're just refreshing. It's good for you. Uh, you know, it's things that can you can feel good about eating. Mm -hmm. So this, so this, we also do this um, banana yogurt. Um, it's kind of like an Indian style soup, and so we're kind of playing with that um, soup, this chilled soup that we've done, uh, with taking the bananas, some roasted garlic, and then this is kind of a, I think, a little bit of a weird, surprising ingredient is ginger ale. Uh, we put a little bit of ginger ale in there, and that helps retain some of the whiteness in the banana. Wow. I know, right? I, I don't like I it. don't even understand why, but <laughs> but it works. But so. it works. <laughs> and so and then We're the ginger that, is obviously yes. adding with everything <laughs> else. So um, yeah, this is something we did a, uh, a guest chef thing on Holland America Cruise Line. Uh, and did the Panama Canal this winter, and Ooh. that um, that was something we learned from working uh, with one of the Indian chefs there. So that was kind of cool. Really? We, we, we love that. We love when we can learn um, yes. from others. So okay. I bet that was super fun. It was really fun. It was our we did our two bucket list cruises. We did Alaska, and we got to do Panama Canal. So wow. it, was, it was pretty fantastic. Yes. All right. So. Making sure. Mm -hmm. Power. <laughs> this pulse. ninja confuses yeah. me at times, so I'm hoping. There oh, you go. Good. See? Yay. I didn't need <laughs> Richard's <Yes>. help. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you just, just basically, we're just getting it to, you know, that creamy texture. Mm -hmm. Again, then that's going to be part of the, the guacamole. Because um, I like a little bit of chunks and a little creaminess when I make guacamole. So, which is why you may mix half of it, you suggest, right. into a paste, if you will, like this, or a smoother emulsion. Exactly. And now the rest of it's going to be a little chunkier. Right. Like and so, we're, we're just going to cut, you know, the banana into a small dice. Again, when you're working with, you know, food that's kind of slippery, uh, like tomatoes or bananas, just try to, you know, get it into shapes where it's going to be flat. And then, you know, use your knife that way so that you have less chance of cutting yourself. Mm -hmm. You can keep those fingers that right. your parents worked so hard for you to have. Yes. <laughs> no, I think these are, the, these are the foods where people, and a sharp knife, you know, is essential as well. Mm -hmm. It always seems like, oh, you want a sharper knife to not cut yourself seems a bit odd, but seems it is true. Seems counterintuitive, but right. so true. 
So our friends from up. Cutco across the way are really big um, teachers about making sure your knives stay sharp and don't buy a set of knives and then never really think that they ne ever need attention again exactly. because they do. I think that's one of the great things about farmer's markets now. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of knife sharpeners at your local farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. So it's always kind of nice to just bring them by and just put an edge on them because mm -hmm. it, it does make all the difference. Right. And then we're just going to sort of add, cl again, classic uh, flavors of what I put in my guacamole at home is, you know, red onion, some jalapeno, again, deciding how hot you want this, you know, personal choice. Cilantro. Uh, we'll just take a knife through that and just slice that in. Ryan, do you have a lime over there? Uh, I have one here. Oh, yes. Perfect. You want zested? Yes, please. And then we're just going to add again a little <laughs> of that zest. It makes Brian so happy that you said <laughs> yes to the zest. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. And again, with herbs, you know, you don't need to cut them into this small little, you know, piece. You just want to lightly get your knife through them, not mm -hmm. to bruise them. And you're doing mostly cilantro? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really love cilantro, so I love all things yes. Mexican. <laughs> it's awesome. And then, again, we can just pour this in sort of determine how much we want, how creamy we want it. And then, again, I'm going to use this, um, this orange uh, salt to kind of pull things for, which isn't in your recipe, but as I was making it, I'm like, why, why wouldn't I use that? It's yes. going to have more flavor. It's totally working with the dish. So our recipe calls for just traditional kosher salt, but when you can add that little added zing, right. really do it. Oh, and again, so I good. always say to people, you know, just taste your food, too. I think that's a common question that we get from, from um, people about seasoning. And how do I season? How much do I know how to put in? You know, my recipe called for this, but it's tasting flat. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep tasting it and, and, and try it and see, okay, do I need a little bit more? Uh, I always tell this story to my interns. When I was in culinary school, uh, it was a very intense chef in our skills class, uh, and he was quite intimidating. And I remember from the soup, I think I was making, like, uh, lentil or... Soup. I, I think he tasted my soup like 30 times before he told me, okay, you finally got the seasoning. Mm, wow. <laughs> but I was just so scared to be, you know, to put too much in and what would I do then? Right. Uh, but, but it, you know, it takes a while to train your palate to mm -hmm. figure that stuff out. So, the, I mean, you're, you're tasting it is your best tool. Right. And the product's always different. So the, tip, the exactly. banana might be a little sweeter. It might not be sweet at all. And so you, you really have to, the same with tomatoes, completely different totally. with the acidity and all that goes with yeah, it. Yeah, same right. thing with jalapenos. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only way to know is to actually oh my gosh, to take I know. the bite and, yes. and, you know, learn as you go. Right. So there I need a little touch more salt, but I think I'm actually good on spice and everything else. Good. So Perfect. we're good to go. Again, this um, recipe, if, if you were holding it, I would just recommend putting saran wrap directly on top. Keep it in the fridge. The colder, the better uh, for this, for retaining um, some of the whiteness. Uh, and again, this is really something you could get your prep together, but the banana stuff, I would try to do that sort of last minute if you were doing this as an mm -hmm. entertaining dish. So it might hold for a few hours, exactly. but not for a few days. Yes. So after this We'll be going back and making that yes, for tonight. I'm sure you will. We have not done it ahead of time. <laughs> Any questions so far about what you've seen happen up mm. here? The banana guacamole? Yes. Thank you. Could you explain Coco Lopez? Coco Lopez is basically uh, the ingredient that they use in pina coladas. So it's, it comes in a can. It's, um, it's kind of a... Um, a th it, I'm trying to think of what it... I mean, it's a sweetened... Out. Yeah. It Coconut almost pours like out like a molasses. Like a, yeah, like a paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's at I the mean, regular grocery store. You don't even have to go to a liquor store to get it because it's a mixer. There's no alcohol in it. But you're welcome to go to the liquor store, <laughs> yes. And I always say I think the nice thing about this recipe is there's no way you'll use the whole can, which kind of makes you have to make a pina colada. I know. So, you're required um, to. I'm there with you. That's awesome. Another question. While well, we're getting the oil hot for the scallops. Okay, you're enjoying okay. the dish. And, and it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. this related item. It could be another food item or I, people often say, how can you guys as husband and wife work together and do all this together? People definitely have questions about that. that we, yes. That we're happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is not a facade. They really are happy. Yes, Marie. What? 
Oh, you would probably find it where you, um, where they um, are doing um, like cocktail mixes, wherever you would find your like yes. daiquiri mix or right. um, roses, key lime, exactly. you know, that you're going to make oh, a yeah, gimlet good. with, grenadine, any of those that are mixers, tonic, any of those that are mixers that aren't, don't have alcohol. Right. And Coco Lo that's a brand. Yes. I mean, there's different, different other ones out there. That's just one we're familiar uh -huh. with. Yeah. Yes. We don't make any money from them. So. <laughs> no. Darn it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, such a good question. If you can't get the dry um, packed scallops or day boat scallops, what's the what best I way would, to dry yeah. them out? What I would do first is I, when I got them out of the whatever packaging they were in, I would do a rinse like in a colander under um, chilled water just to try and get any type of solution that they might have put on the scallop. And then even at the, the restaurant, you know, scallops will naturally leach. Um, so what you would just do is get like a paper towel and just kind of dab them a little bit and try and get them to be as dry as possible. Um, and again, like Shannon said, normally with a, a scallop dish, you would like a smoking hot pan. This dish is kind of a little bit different because we did marinate it in brown sugar and maple syrup, which again, when you put in hot oil, will burn and scold. So this is maybe the most complicated part is just knowing the temperature. You still want it hot, is. but you don't want that smoking hot scalding because it'll burn up the sugar before it starts to, to cook the scallop. And, and you've got a dry scallop, but then you put it in a wet marinade. Exactly. So a little bit of that is retained. But did you even try to pat some of that off? We, yeah, we do. We'll, we'll pat that off mm -hmm. and um, dry it off a little bit because, mm -hmm. again, you want, you want to get that nice kind of uh, sear, mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to steam the scallop. Okay. Um, nice. So yes, sir. Can I give a testimonial? A testimonial, sure. of course. Oh, oh, good. Oh, thank All right. you. I, I had my breath held there for just a second, but yes. <laughs> if, if we need to get the uh, microphone, yes, exactly, could be. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, Shanna and Brian have um, their. I mentioned that their pot pies are so legendary that they actually have made them available to the <laughs> likes of you and I. Um, the website, if I'm right, is Maine Lobster Pot Pie. Dot com. Maine yes. Dot com. Maine Lobster potpie.com, but it's phenomenal. I mean, the uh, we did them a couple yes. of years ago, and everybody almost had tears in their eyes because <laughs> they're just so huge and beautiful. Right. No, it was funny. When we came here, we thought we, were, we, we do miniature versions of them for, for, you know, samplers, and then for this event, we thought it was going to be the smaller amount, and then they showed us the ramekins, and we're like, oh, wow, we're doing the real deal, mm -hmm. you know, so it was quite... Quite the deal for everyone eating here because yes. they got a glass of wine and <laughs> the real Popeye for, yes. I think it was $15 yes. or whatever it was. <laughs> but yeah, so then I, and I make the puff pastry, hand roll it. So I all of a sudden I was like, oh, I guess I'm making more because yes, I need a bigger indeed. piece. So I mean, who <laughs> hand makes and hand rolls puff pastry? She does, oh but person. it really <laughs> is. And that's what we get when we order it online too. So right. no wonder it kills it, right? Really, really great. And then did I understand that you've got the lobster lo mein available online too now? Yeah. Right, which so is what we did last year at Party for the Senses. We did a, a lobster cold, uh, cold miso noodle dish, and then Brian does an uh, Asian um, marinated pork belly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, that kit comes there. Yeah, so you get your noodles, your cilantro, your um, sesame seeds. You get two tubes of the miso dressing, the lobster meat separate. So you're going to put that together. It's always fresh lobster meat. We're big believers in, you know, it's lobsters from Maine. It should be fresh. Yeah. Uh, and and then, it does ship out overnight. So. Yes. It does. Yes. yes. You, but then it does give you the flexibility. If life happens and you can't eat that meal, you can freeze it. So yes. it, it does give you some of that, which I think is nice. Wow. I love it. Well. So did you serve it to an event? Yes. At oh, Christmas great. time. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yes. Made everybody very happy. <laughs> <laughs> gods. <laughs> they were gods, I tell you. <laughs> that is great. So, oh, look at those. Beautiful. And I'm not sure when you ordered it, but we did now partner with a company called Foodie Direct out of Palo Alto. So they actually have all different um, types of foods on their website. Uh, really, it's going to make you hungry when you go on there. Um, but so now it's free shipping all the way up to New York. Uh, overnight, and then it's twenty nine ninety five everywhere else. Because before it was costing people like eighty hundred dollars to ship overnight, just because we were, again, we're a mom and pop business, small. So, right. um, so you know, yeah, we are um, ordering, packaging, preparing, <laughs> right. wow. and shipping. So, so it, it's so it, it's actually not available right now. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> right, it's a flat rate. Exactly. Yep. Wow, that's yeah. really really great. I, I feel Christmas coming on again. <laughs> All there is to it. 
when you scored those, Brian, did yeah. you score it just on one side? Just on the one okay. side. Okay, yeah. and that's the one that you put face down, if you will, into the pan for the to first start. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Okay, yes. nice. Just nice. like, yeah, if you're doing fish, it's always you start skin side down. Mm -hmm. Same. And, and same again, that just helps uh, because we're doing it, um, we're not going to be finishing these in the oven, so it's already kind of, you're getting that char on the outside, but the heat is mm -hmm. kind of building up to the center of the scallop, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty quick... You know, if, if you're doing this at home, it's a 10 minute mm -hmm. from the point of putting scallops in the uh, pan to, to serving up. Well, and really that's what I'm seeing about all of this because I'm imagining we could get the coconut polenta done in advance mm -hmm. and maybe just um, heat it up with a little more coconut water or Absolutely. milk and bring it back to temp. And have this the, ready to go, but just add the fresh One bananas. of the great things I think about polenta too is when it... When you're done using it, it kind of does stiffen up in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So then you can also then kind of cut it into like logs and make polenta french fries, mm -hmm. where you can um, put it in an egg and um, breadcrumb mixture and do fried polenta. Mm -hmm. and it really just holds up as a mm -hmm. another next day serving, or um, mm -hmm. you can always use polenta in a multiple uh, ways. So. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, it's great for breakfast. Yes, another question here. Absolutely. So in place of the scallops, you could use shrimp. Would you use exactly the same marinade? You would. Uh, actually, so. this pie is geared more towards a, a, a shrimp dish. We were just trying to get a different style. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, you would normally probably see shrimp chicken, with a dish like this. Chicken would be beautiful with this, too. You certainly could do yep. the marinade with that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, duck. You know, it just really could loan it, wow. lend itself to a lot of uh, a different proteins. No, I love that. And, yes... We serve gu banana guacamole with any other, any any other dishes. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, chicken, shrimp, uh, right. lobster. Uh, mm -hmm. It would certainly go well with. Um, again, it, it, even it's, just it's, chips. Yeah, I'm thinking it <laughs> would be good. delicious. Even if you did some longer plantain chips, chips would be yeah, oh great. Gosh, or yes. the, yeah, those like beet chips and yes. yucca chips. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that would definitely. I mean, I think that would be great. Yeah, like we're football Sundays, we're doing chili or something like that, and having that, I think, would be fantastic well, with it. Well, what would be great is because I'm constantly, I'm the guacamole maker for every one of those events, but trying to find avocados because mm. I'm at the store two hours before I'm supposed right. to make it and trying to find them ripe or get them ripe. I love that yeah. alternative. Yeah, no, you're right because right now it, it, they've been having a hard time. There's mm -hmm. something going on with uh, avocados so you're exactly right on that. And this too, you would want, you know, a firm uh, banana. I mean, not not hard, but you, right. you, but you don't want it overly ripe because mm -hmm. that would just, nice. you, you saw we want to keep sort of that cubing and the and the puree. My gosh, Brian, that looks so delicious. So he, and you can see he's putting a little bit more of that, um, that salt, that finishing mm -hmm. salt on there uh, again. Love that. And our chips. Um, oh yeah, my chips. The chip. <laughs> oh, and then there's the chips. Yes. <laughs> yes. all about them. <laughs> Could you use pink Absolutely. Himalayan instead of the pink sea salt? Absolutely. Yeah. A great, gray, um, gray salts are becoming very popular right now. Mm -hmm. So basically, which, whatever kind of salt you have in the house mm -hmm. would certainly, <laughs> I mean, besides the, the iodized, mm -hmm. but a lot of times like in those, like, yeah, you just want something bigger those the gift grain. bags, you get like those different types of salt. Right. Any of those kind of high-end salts would certainly work. And that's the nice thing with the orange zest is it's got the, um, the oil, so it helps to kind of infuse the oils in there a little bit, a uh, little bit more. And I'm guessing we could also use any kind of citrus if we wanted to of do course. a lime salt or Yuzu. a. Oh, oh, wow! He's getting fancy. He is getting fancy. <laughs> Look at wow! Me. Look but yes, at you that. can do all the now the citrus blood orange. Yeah, you, know, you can it'd be so elevate fun. it to different levels. And there we have jerk sea scallops, coconut polenta, banana guacamole, <laughs> banana chips. Yay! <laughs> so delicious. Good. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Well, we got some questions answered right along, but yes, another one. If you wanted to dial, dial back, back the sweetness, sweetness on the polenta just the, a little bit. I would, I would pull back on the Coco Lopez. Mm -hmm. um, or leave it out yeah. altogether. Either. Yeah, because right. the coconut mm -hmm. water has no sugar added. There's nothing to there, so you could certainly go all mm -hmm. coconut water. Um, the, the coconut milk sometimes will have a little bit, but the... The, the sweetness really comes from the Coco Lopez. Mm -hmm. And if the marinade, you could, um, for the, that, I would maybe just omit the um, brown sugar. Or I'd the maple syrup. Keep, yeah, I'd probably keep a little of the maple syrup. If you're going to keep one or the other, I'd probably tend to say keep the maple syrup and omit the, the mm -hmm. brown sugar. 
Yeah, sounds delicious. Great question. Yes. So the um, recipe says to marinate the scallops for 30 minutes, but you tend to do it much longer. Yeah, right? we, um, the, the more we played around, because like shrimp, it's a lot um, less dense. Right. Where the scallops really kind of uh, need a little bit longer okay. to, yeah, to pick sorry. up. Sorry, that I, was probably, probably be editing on, by me. Yes. I write the recipe, so that was you got me on a, <laughs> yeah. a good edit. Because <laughs> traditionally, you do with but shrimp. Yeah, I, exactly. I would say Something. at a minimum, Put them in for 30 minutes right. at a minimum because, okay. you know, yeah. just like what I did here, I mean, that probably didn't mm -hmm. take up too much of the, the mm -hmm. actual flavor. No, it right. was probably, yeah, 20 minutes or so in that, but very good eye. Okay. All there is to it. Yes. Can you repeat the marinating schedule? The marinating schedules? Well, like I said, you could certainly make the marinade. Uh, I actually would say to make the marinade a day before because, again, the... The uh, orange, the maple syrup, that's going to kind of bleed out and it's going to come a little bit more of a liquid. Uh, same thing even with the ginger and the garlic. Uh, and then I would, we, uh, for this size scallop, because it's, it's a nice size scallop, we yeah. probably put them in yesterday at 3.30 and right. we were in the kitchen this morning at 7.30 taking it off. So, um, Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Love that. Yeah, but you definitely again, wouldn't want it longer mm -hmm. than 24 hours. That no. Yeah. Yeah. That well, it's just going to start to cook it, and that's when you get maybe that rubbery, rubbery yes. scallop texture that you And as not, you say, the smaller want. scallop, like the Nantucket Bay, again, just if, if you, if you um, probably are airing on caution, caution would say less, not more, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. We're all good. We're all happy. Delicious, Happy. I know. And the pairing, how did that work? As good as we thought? I, I mean, I can so. almost yeah. taste it. So I'm excited to do that. So good. How about a huge thank you to Brian and Shanna. Mm. So fantastic. You. Love you all being here. Thank you. Yeah. Love, we love, love. love. We just always do so many fun things. So Definitely. I know it. Um, one year, um, Shanna was ripe off of um, the victory lap for <laughs> winning um, uh, the, her rewrapped, which is a really cool thing. But the thing that she was able to celebrate with us is that for her victory prize, she had won a year's supply of Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. <laughs> so. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Who gets that right. option? That is fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Yeah. So um, we'll be seeing you tonight, those yeah. of us that are joining. If you aren't planning to go to Party for the Senses but are hungering for another taste of this, do check um, in the front with the concierge and see if there's any tickets that might still be available. Mm. Um, we'll be back up here at 2 o'clock. We have Chef John Coletta that's joining us from his incredible restaurant in Chicago, Cortino. Mm. And he's going to be doing this cool pasta. Very, Very excited cool. for you to yeah, see it's that. Really cool. It's really <laughs> cool pasta. Stamped out. It's just unbelievable. Um, right now, though, I'm going to go right around the bend at one o'clock and introduce you to Brian Talley from Talley Vineyards. He's mm -hmm. here bringing, I know, delicious. You might yeah. have to yeah, go I'm over and take a little taste. <laughs> He's going to be doing a tasting of three of his wines. Beautiful. We're very excited to have him here. And at 1.15, a complimentary back to basics. We have Melissa's Specialty Produce that's here with us. Melissa's Produce um, has been a partner of the Food and Wine Festival for many years, and they're going to be doing amazing things with produce. So we'll see you hopefully in one of the places. Otherwise, have a fabulous day. One more huge thank you. Brian Great. and Shanna, thank fantastic. Woohoo! See you soon.